Steve Dooley from Outdoor Hub Media, back with our good friend Larry Potterfield from Midway USA, and I uh, want to get into a few more things about you know the, the future of your business and the focus of your business going forward. But one of the key shareholder requirements that I see as I walk the hallways of Midway USA is that that you have to support the hunting and shooting industries in those sports. Tell me how that became one of these key shareholder requirements of your business. As you get into modern leadership and management principles from Baldridge, uh, you really understand that you have to quantify a lot of things and get things down on paper that are important to you as compared to just word of mouth or well you should know that that's what I want because we've talked about it before. So we do indeed put down on paper and post on the walls and talk about in our meetings the things that are important to us, whether they be customer key requirements, employee key requirements, vendor, or even the shareholder. So Brenda and I as the shareholders have key requirements of the organization, what it takes to satisfy us as owners of the organization, that the organization has to provide that. One of those is that they have to support the shooting sports industry and have to support the National Rifle Association of America and Second Amendment. That's fabulous. Well, speaking of the NRA, uh, I don't remember what year. I'm sure you can remind me. But if I'm not mistaken, the the first Friends of the NRA banquet was here in Columbia, if I'm not mistaken. Was it not? Yes. So I, how many years ago was that? Well, I'm going to tell you the story of how we got it started, and I'll put the date in there. Um, we had started NRA Roundup uh, on the second day of January in 1992. And if you want, I'll tell you about Roundup in a little bit. But, but let me talk just about Friends of NRA. So uh, every Tuesday then, we would send a check to the to the NRA ILA division to go into the Second Amendment Foundation. Um, so here we are, this is in January, and I'm communicating with a guy named Wayne Sheets at the NRA. I had met him and talked to him before we ever started it. So now we're at the NRA show in Salt Lake, and I'm guessing this is April or May of 1992, and we've been sending him a check every week for 120 bucks or whatever. It wouldn't have been a lot of money back in those mm -hmm. days uh, for NRA Roundup. And he is, we're talking there, and he's telling me how great that is and how proud he is of Midway and all this. And I says, you know, we can do more. I said, when Brenda and I get back home, we're going to get together a group of our friends, and we're going to throw a party for the NRA. It'll be a fundraising party. So here's about a dozen friends we put together who would all be sympathetic to the NRA mm -hmm. and the Second Amendment, all with experience in key conservation groups. And we said, this is what we want to do. We want to throw a party for the NRA that would work about like this. And so, uh, indeed, we did. Uh, during that process of having those meetings, we came up with the term Friends of NRA. So that term was coined here in Columbia, Missouri in 1992 during that planning process in the summer. And I believe the October 12th or something like that of 1992, the very first ever Friends of NRA me meeting was held here in Columbia. And the 20th one is coming up now in 2012. And to be a big celebration over that, of course. But from that, certainly one of the single greatest success stories for the National Rifle Association of America is literally being able to start these up all over the country. There's maybe right. between 1,000 and 1,200 of them now. They're very significant fundraisers, and they're able to place that money back into uh, the states where the money is raised and primarily for youth development for gun clubs. And that was something that Wayne Sheets and I set up way back then as to how the money was to be distributed that they raised. But more importantly, when you go into a Friends of NRA, uh, banquet, if you would, mm -hmm. meeting, uh, those are your friends there right. that you didn't even have any idea that the local car dealer was an NRA supporter. The guy who's digging ditches over here with his backhoe is an NRA supporter. And you're all there in the same room. So the, the concept down at the grassroots of understanding who the players are has been a significant thing for the NRA too. So it's both money and it's getting closer to their customers, if you would. Can you tell us a little bit as we're talking about endowments and foundations, about uh, Midway USA Foundation and the Scholastic Shooting Trust. Mm. Uh, again, more of how you are giving back to this industry that's given so much to you. The Midway USA company has been very successful. So it's 35 years now. We have a successful company. Uh, it makes more money than what we need as a family to live on. So what do you do with money? What can you do with your money to change the future? And so we started looking around the industry. And I mean, you've got all the key conservation groups. And you think, well, where could we put money? Where does, where's money needed mm -hmm. that it, there's no source of money for today? And we got to thinking about high school and college shooting. And we said, well, you know, there's 20 or 22,000 high school and colleges in America. OK, how many of them have shooting teams? Well, nobody knows. 
There is no repository of knowledge about how many shooting teams there are in the American schools. But we know there's probably maybe a thousand of them or something like that. So you have a thousand schools with teams and 22,000 schools in total. And of the thousand schools with teams, there is no money for them. So there's no public money going in, there's no school money going in. So where there are teams, there's no money. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if there was money? That if you would set up some kind of an organization that would allow people to put money into their high school shooting team that you would endow and hold forever and then give it out 5% a year. We looked around the industry and we couldn't find anybody that wanted to do that. So we went to the effort of creating our own foundation, the Midway USA Foundation. Right. Today it has only one mission and that is to collect money for high school and college shooting teams to hold it and investment, invest it and then to give it back 5% a year for the rest of the time wildly successful program. The family puts lots of money into it. Mm -hmm. Other organizations put money into it. And ultimately that will drive that opportunity for high school and college students to be able to, when they go to school in that period of time, from the time they're 14 or 15 until the time they're 22, that they now have the opportunity to shoot when they're in high school or college. Our daughter shot when she was in college because there was a shooting team at Colorado State. Our son went to Michigan. There wasn't a shooting team there. He did not get to shoot during those, those college years. So we think that that can be fixed and it takes leadership from a family like the Potterfields and the Midway USA Company through the foundation to make that work.